Donkey Kong. Last time, we went over the developmental history of Donkey Kong 64, looking over various cut designs of characters to early versions of various maps to even Donkey Kong with a shotgun. This along with a stop and swap system with Banjo-Kazooie to unlock a key item. But with the game's release, a ton more were discovered within both its data and the data of the leaked kiosk demo of the game, featuring numerous cut models, cut bosses, altered maps, and even removed cutscenes. And so today on Cut Content, in part 2, we shall explore the beta unused content of Donkey Kong 64. If you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button too to further support us and keep creating new videos. To begin, we'll go through this location by location to explore all that was cut and altered found within the data. Starting with DK Island itself, specifically with Donkey Kong's treehouse level. As seen last time, the treehouse originally contained a fridge that had Banjo and Kazooie's image on it likely meant for the stop and swap feature that we touched upon last time, which we'll further elaborate later on in the video. But in addition, there are a few more concepts related to it here. First off, being an unused cutscene that pans to where that very fridge was, and then warps you to the crystal caves, where this feature was to be used. But as well, there are two additional spawn points within DK's house. The first spawns you in front of the doorway, specifically in front of the oil drum. The other in the center of the room, which is separate from the one that starts you off in the game actually. The purpose of these are unknown, but it is possible that one of these two could have been the return trip from Crystal Caves to here. In addition, outside of the treehouse itself, the railings were to have vines wrapped around them, which we have the texture here, as seen in these old screenshots too. Now on DK Island and the surrounding areas, there are a few slight differences here, one being this crown hatch that was found meant to go on the base of the Crocodile Island crown, and was originally meant to open up it seems. Instead, all that we got in the final game was a black void. Fairy Island itself has three unused cutscenes, which all appear to have unfinished dialogue, potentially regarding the fairy collection of the game. In addition, there are some early versions of the palm trees here too, three of them in fact, this one being an oddity in that it can't be climbed. Palm trees mainly appear on DK Island, and of course, Jungle Japes. Bringing us of course to Jungle Japes itself. Now looking directly into the kiosk demo, it contains the minecart minigame, except harder. Instead of requiring you to collect 50 coins to complete, it requires you to collect 70, basically nearly all of them. Also there is this unused flag with an odd wooden texture designated for this minecart level that went unused and this red and white barrier for this section. This version hurting you unlike the final games. As well, let's talk about the boss fight against Army Dillo. Unlike his iteration in the final game, where he has only one voice clip, here he has several voiced clips. And they don't fit him at all. Ah! You dare challenge me? <laughs> then I must crush you! No! no! You can't beat me! You'll never defeat Carol! But maybe that's because it was more associated with the beta version of Army Dillo, looking a lot meaner, but also smaller than the original one. Interestingly, it had a unique HUD too. Might have been an original take on a health bar, with the skeletal form showing how close to death they are. Also, Jungle Japes had several unused cutscenes too of various locations that looked to indicate a task was completed and something was to activate. As well, an early version of the opening cutscene, and a few around the log here too, and one that circles around the banana porter that used to be a banana blast pad originally. There were also a few different textures too, such as the Rambi wall instead having an X on it. Guess it wasn't too obvious, and thus why they might have made a switch. Speaking of Rambi, while at no point do we see him near water, he does have the ability to swim if he does come across water, potentially might have even meant that this level had water at one point. Now in terms of textures, there are these stairs that lead to the beehive that didn't have grass on them originally, the chain links in the minecart area being more symmetrical as well as a different wall texture and the portrait of DK Island in the portrait room originally having an image of giraffes instead, 
likely a placeholder. As well, in addition to palm trees seen earlier, a few more cut objects are found in Jungle Japes. These include this unused log tunnel, different from the one from the final game. And finally, there are a few unused spawn points here too. One in front of the Chimpy Charge Gate, one only slightly ahead of the entrance, one being where the original lanky exit door was originally, and the other Tiny's original exit door. Next up is Angry Aztec. Now the boss of this level is Dogadon. However, in the kiosk demo, he is only the boss of Crystal Caves, which the second fight at Fungi Forest never had him back then. Instead, it seems the snake boss with a necklace was going to be the original boss of Angry Aztec, which also had that old boss HUD too. A very fitting boss for an animal fitting of the desert, and in fact, we even have an early screenshot that featured this boss itself, in very low quality at that. Looking very temple-like with the torches, a perfect fit for Angry Aztec indeed. Now interestingly, we have this room here in the demo, containing several torches, a mermaid in a T-pose, and a zinger. Normally, we'd think this is just a test room, but seemingly it is listed as the boss room for the snake boss. The very torches from the screenshot are seen here after all, but otherwise everything else is different. My theory here being that once the boss was scrapped, they swapped out the map for the one that they were using for the other test rooms and just used it as another test room, which is why the mermaid and the zinger are around. As well, we have four unused objects too for an early version of this level, which include a pillar, a platform, and a taller platform and a gate. This along with several early textures too. One of these early textures seen in an old screenshot having grass on the archway, as well as a different ground texture too, and different variations for the lava wall textures. Also, there are these cacti that aren't tied to any specific level, but it would make the most sense for them to appear in the one desert-like level of the game. For Lanky's matching game, it seems that there were several different sound effects originally versus the final ones, these go. Angry Aztec only has one unused spawn point, and this being at the bottom of the slide before the finish line, which is near the end of the race. Odd. Now Frantic Factory was more explicit in what it made originally, in that it made toys with two signs existing for a toy machine boot up animation, and a sign that literally says toy machine. I mean considering the boss, is this really a surprise? Speaking of which, let's talk about Mad Jack. Originally he had a different model seen in early footage with spinning tiles that matched a box found in the data, potentially originally part of his attack? but it seems he received one more revision before the extreme makeover of the final game. Looking less killer clown here, and seems he also had a boxing glove variation too, for maybe when you approach him. Now alternatively, it is possible these were not even bosses, but more minions of the actual Mad Jack, where they spawned from the side entrance of the original flat map to attack you. Now interestingly, it seems at one point Army Dillo was listed as the boss of Frantic Factory 2. A potential second take on him, kinda like how Dogadon was the boss of two locations in the final game. Either that or it was just a placeholder till Mad Jack was made. But the kiosk demo had a hidden test map of the actual Mad Jack fight too, and originally he even sent flaming toy boxes at you instead of just fireballs. The level also had its own setup of unused textures, including early lobby textures, an actual see-through grating that can't even be seen in early screenshots. And also remember that cage Chunky Kong is stuck in? Well, there is a wooden version of it in the data that may have been its original form. And lastly, the level has one unused spawn point for the toy monster factory in R&D. Normally, you can't warp here, and instead when you die, you just go to the level's entrance instead. Gloomy Galleon has its share of unused objects, for one, there is a small animated flag of Rare Rare themselves. Now this is in the final game for the race, except it doesn't animate. However, originally it wasn't any of these, but a Kremlin Skull and Bones flag from DKC2. Furthermore, there are other objects for the race too, including these left and right flags, potentially for directions in the race or even as a checkpoint. There is also an unused cutscene for this map too. In the first instance, it shows you coming out of this chest, and where to take the pearl to. Like the other maps, 
Gloomy Galleon has its own unused spawn points as well. One of them spawning you to the left of the barrel cannon underneath the window, the other for the race whereby it determines which position you begin in. Now in the final game you can only have a maximum of 3 melons for your life bar, which starts you off of course with 1, however within the data of the game, it seems you could upgrade that to 4 melons. It is as such believed that you could have gotten the 4th upgrade as early as Gloomy Galleon. I mean wouldn't having 2 pairs of melons make much more sense than having 1.5? Now, if we are going to talk about the health bar, it is also a good time to mention the existence of the old life counter, even if not tied to Gloomy Galleon. Originally, like the previous Donkey Kong games, there was going to be a life counter, which as shown in the previous video, was Diddy's head as a placeholder, and then this fitting silver balloon taking its place, which was of course made as a 2D sprite. Losing life has this neat popping animation for it too. Also, there seems to be this portrait of Donkey Kong that was supposed to appear in the shipwreck of the level, much like Captain K. Rule's portrait. As well, there were different textures here too, such as this early wood texture for ships, and the treasure chest textures being very simple originally, lacking moss at that, as well as the heart vents on the mechanical fish not having any punctures through their grates. Now this is one of the only maps that actually keeps its boss fight the same. I mean, where else would fit a fish? But as well, it seems there was a test room for Puff Toss here. All stationary and clipping through the level. Why? Now the kiosk demo also had a boss fight against the Fungi Forest boss, Dogadon, which by the final game is seen to be the second time you face him. Nothing too different, except the lighting on Chunky isn't really there originally for the cutscene, and the boss has a different sound effect for his fireballs. Strangely enough, in this demo, this boss was assigned to Crystal Caves instead. What was assigned to Fungi Forest was... Puff Toss, again. I know I just said he wouldn't fit anywhere else, and especially not a forest, but I guess maybe they wanted to make around two of him in a forest pond or something? Either that, or it was just a placeholder. Now speaking of bosses, Fungi Forest's mini boss, the giant spider, was supposed to have an intro cutscene to his fight too, as well as his projectiles originally having 16 frames of silky smooth animation compared to the lack of animations for the final one, and in relation, these cobwebbed wall textures that were never used either. Onto the level itself, for the minecart course, there are these red and green bells in the final game that close the gate normally, but in the data, it seems there was a gold bell too. Early footage shows that it functioned to both close and open the gates, since you couldn't tell them apart, maybe why they color coded them. This along with two variations of the orange crystals, seen at the beginning of the race. In this case, being blue and green. Going further, it seems that there was going to be a ray of sunlight over this well in the central area of the map. And then comes the textures, which one hilarious one is regarding the rabbit you race. When not racing, he normally sleeps. With his eyes open. Originally, he could close his eyes. A little mean of you there, Rare. And finally, Crystal Caves. As mentioned earlier, the Dogadon fight was originally assigned to this cave, as found within the kiosk demo. But as well, there are several unused spawn points. One that spawns you to Tiny's bonus barrel shrink hole, which some evidence in the data points to being a trough and scoffs portal originally. Another spawns you at the center of the big kosher room, which normally can only be accessed via the tiny pad. This along with 5 scrapped exit points too. Also, there is an unused ice pedestal that looks to belong to this level, being that it is the only level with sort of an ice theme. Now for cutscenes, the first involves a zoom in on the strong Kong barrel, which may be a hint to spawn it originally before you could use it. Next are a collection of 5 cutscenes that focus on the wrinkly Kong frozen entrance in various angles. Not sure what the purpose of this could have been. And another being an early intro cutscene for the caves. Now, as we already discussed, the cutscene in DK's treehouse warps you straight to Crystal Caves here. This warp lands you in this small cave that contains a Chunky Kong pad. In relation, another cutscene exists that points to where a gate would have existed and opened originally, whereby the very gate objects stay unused. And not just that, but in that very room, there are also many, many unused enemy spawns here, 
including a clump, two kremlins, three green clamp traps, two purple clamp traps, and one red clamp trap. What does this all mean when brought together? Absolute freaking mayhem! Imagine this, you warp here, and you find yourself locked in a room with that gate, having to face all these enemies at once. But why? As the final game only offers a golden banana. It's simply because it was part of the stop and swap system that they were making for the game. Stop and swap was a big initiative Rare was taking on that was actually originally discovered within Banjo-Kazooie, where in Freezy Peak, you see a giant key spinning through an alcove but it can't be obtained. But further in the data, there was a hidden menu called Stop and Swap. As mentioned in the last video, this was a system they were developing that would have you power down your console, swap the card out for another rare related game that has swap and stop, such as going from Donkey Kong 64 to Banjo Kazooie in only 30 seconds, do a task in that game, power it down again, and swap back, and then you've unlocked a special feature for said game. For Donkey Kong 64, you would have gotten that very ice key that wasn't Banjo-Kazooie, and considering this fridge had Banjo-Kazooie's face on it, it may have required the key to send you into that area. In fact, this old German strategy guide accidentally published an early version of that room that shows an extension of that very room here that doesn't exist in the final game, which is where the big prize may have been for defeating this crazy challenge. Also note, the Red Clam Trap is an unused enemy, which only is seen in cutscenes prior. And this brings us to Creepy Castle and its own mystery around Stop and Swap. In Creepy Castle, there is a museum room that has two rooms blocked off by glass. The only way to access these rooms is via a tiny Kong pad. One leads to a fairy, the other leads to a room that only has some bananas there, but there is this one special piece of decoration here a soul pillar in a room blocked by glass. Outside of those bananas, there isn't anything in there. However, unlike the truck by the Saint Anne, this wasn't just meant as basic decoration, as Rare themselves have said that it indeed is a leftover from developmental fluctuations, and seems once more our friends, the Germans, released an early version of this map via their strategy guide here, which shows that a golden DK statue was going to be on that very pedestal to collect. Now, it is unknown what collecting it would have accomplished, but it has a very similar illusion to the Ice Key in Banjo being out of reach too, if this had stayed. Perhaps this would have been what another rare game would have had you retrieve through a stop and swap, much as how this game was to retrieve the Ice Key. But much like the Crystal Key's early map being in that strategy guide, this would as such also point to it being Ice Key related as well, as both were clearly removed at roughly the same time late in development, but this was altogether a feature Rare was going to use for even more of their games, including Banjo-Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, back then known as Conker's 12 Tales, Perfect Dark, and Jet Force Gemini. Donkey Kong 64's version was scrapped, of course, and of course Nintendo didn't want this to happen, as it was being done by exploiting the console's RAM, which if a kid put in the wrong game, it could damage the other game. And later revisions of the Nintendo 64 were set to clear the RAM much quicker than 30 seconds, making this feature absolutely impossible down the road. Now moving on to the rest of Creepy Castle, this followed by two unused objects for the castle featuring a skull candle and a standing castle. Now there's also the simple cutscene of what may have been intended for a golden banana spawning, when normally it would just appear here. The boss fight of this level, King Cutout, normally only had three phases, but originally it was going to have a fourth one too, but it was scrapped, and this fourth phase would have simply been shooting yourself out of the cannon at it. Likely a ceremonious finish, since this was a rather simple phase, which is followed by one short unused cutscene that simply zooms into the key. Now for the King Cruiser 2 level, where the final boss fight against King K. Rule happens, it has several unused cutscenes. These include cutscenes for all the Kong's phases except Diddy. Some being simple vanity shots, the other being for summoning the mini barrel for Tiny Kong. And the uppercut K. Rule does to Chunky instead was to be done on Lanky's phase. This may indicate that Lanky may have been planned to be the one to finish off K. Rule. And of course this hilarious one of the Kremlins literally abandoning ship with the defeat of K. Rule here. Now aside from what was found regarding specific levels, there are a ton of miscellaneous concepts too that are worth exploring. Starting with cut enemies. In addition to the boss related ones as seen earlier, and the red clamp trap, 
There are two other cut enemies. One being this crab, or bug looking enemy, potentially being the knickknack from the previous games, as well as this cut recoil enemy from Donkey Kong Country 3 here, that went unused. Outside of enemies, a numerous amount of objects also went unused. These include singular ammo drops. While the game normally has ammo crates generate 5 pieces of ammo, there is also a variety to them that is never used that generates only one. Kinda like how bananas have bunches of 5s, but also individual ones too. A graphic for a bunch of golden bananas also exists, which may have been for the HUD to showcase how many golden bananas you have. There were also blank pads instead of actual numbered banana porters found too. Wish the beta footage of the game shows at that. Yes, it was just a game of remembering which one went to which. Along with these, there were also these broken pots along with an unbroken version too, a large variety of 2D plants and trees that would follow the camera like Mario 64's tree, these unused green and two double doors, this crate, a random giraffe head, this odd searchlight with the moon right on the lens, maybe it was something that would project the moon instead? This weirdly textured rock, a disco ball, and a blank canvas. There were also these effects for torches, including a campfire, sparkles that have a crackling sound effect, and this glowing metal orb. As well this effect for smoky light too. Then there was these leftover switches, featuring a wave symbol on one, which may indicate that it was an underwater switch? While on the other hand there was this blank one here too. Unused platforms existed as well, like the soil patch, brick wedge, an odd tree stump that appears to have the Kong's face on it for some reason, and this tree stump ramp that looks like it might require Tiny Kong to go through it. As well there is this beta door for the trough and scoff room that appears in every level. And it seems the sky outside of Cranky Kong's lab was going to be dark unlike the final games. And there were also several early graphics for the shop, including this gun here. So this is where Diddy would get his pistols back then. Along with these random unused graphics featuring several potions and a beta version of a banana too. Speaking of the shop, there are early versions of several of these shops too, including Candy's music shop with the signage being a lot simpler, Cranky's lab also receiving a similar kind of change, but also having light textures as well, Funky's armory lacking the satellites, but also spelt armory with a U before it was Americanized for American English and got rid of the U. Snide's HQ had two early renditions, with the first version showing it with a bright yellowish rooftop, and the latter version being a lot like the final games, but had an additional barrel and antenna attached. Also, there are a few other unused elements to Snide's HQ. These include a few unused objects indoors, such as a portrait of DK himself, and two cameras that were supposed to appear indoors too. As well, we have this strange balloon here that isn't actually designated for any of the Kongs, but rather it's labeled for King K. Rule. I have no idea, and I don't think King K. Rule was ever meant to be playable, so this is a complete mystery to me even. Now we also have a few cut NPC creatures too that follow you around. The first are these mice critters. A bunch can be summoned and seem to instantly be attracted to the Kongs. Really wonder what the purpose may have been here. Maybe they'd have been used for a hint system or something to do with Tiny Kong when she shrinks? And as well we have the return of Glimmer, the lantern fish from Donkey Kong Country 2, who would follow you underwater and light up the way. Likely was meant for Gloomy Galleon, but since there wasn't anything too deep or dark there, maybe why it was scrapped. Lastly, let's go over the test rooms found in the data and the kiosk demo. Already we've looked at a few, such as the one with the torches, Zinger and Mermaid, along with the Mad Jack test room and the Puff Toss one. The others include one with a number of blank pads, as seen earlier, that randomly seem to also change into tiny pads, with Tiny herself floating around there too. Another is a room with a number of doors with the Kong's faces on each. These are remnants of the E3 demo, where you can go through them to access various levels designated for the event, such as Diddy's door leading to the minecart level. This followed by a room with a ton of beta jack-in-the-box enemies following DK, probably further proving that these were more minions of the actual Mad Jack. But not just Mad Jack, but it gets wilder with the next map, having a ton of Rareware logos chasing DK instead. I really would like to know what Rare was thinking here. Then there is this one that seems to have structures from Angry Aztec floating in the distance. My guess being that this was more a distance test that they were doing here. 
The last test room involves this black room with three pillars and the replica of Donkey Kong sitting in the middle. He doesn't do anything and there is really nothing else going on in this room. Surprisingly, this can be accessed via a glitch in the final game by visiting Snide after getting all 40 blueprints. If you press A and B on the bonus game, it sends you to Snide's secret dungeon here it seems. If you try to leave it however, it just respawns you here again. This madman truly did want to imprison you here for life. Eventually, once all the pieces were finalized, the game released on November 22nd, 1999 in North America. Having strong reviews right out of the gate and being another successful Donkey Kong game as such. Criticism still did land and mainly for the large amount of collectibles required for the game. But even so, the game went on to sell over 5 million units and becoming one of the best selling games on the console. While the history and cut content of Donkey Kong 64 may be over, this is a large and wide series with numerous plans that were changed, cut, or even cancelled altogether. Games with long histories like Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, a game that I plan to cover eventually. So make sure to hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Donkey Kong and other games cut content soon. Hit the like button and comment below on what element you would have wished to have stayed. So everyone, thank you for watching.